the vast beauty and the nerve-wracking experiences that we faced last year while exploring Yamunetri and the pain of the failure to reach Como that still breaks our heart wasn't the only cause to set out this year. The only question that never stopped lingering in our thoughts again made us leave our comfort zone behind. The question that I still ask myself, have I returned home or I have left home behind? Mountains have always been the solace and refrain of my soul. They say, when the mountain calls, you just can't ignore it. We couldn't either. Himalaya was calling. My home was calling me again. And I must go. We must go. And our journey began.
After we reached Haridwar, our journey to Chukta started rather very late next morning. The roads were still pretty much damaged after the heavy rainfall during the months of July August. They were still under construction. So we had to be very careful on our way. We all knew that our journey was going to be very tedious and freely proved to be one. But like every coin has two sides, our journey unfolded an unforgettable adventure, a different side that we didn't think about before. The broken path might have prolonged our journey and with it triggered back pain in some of us, but at the same time, it allowed us to roam amid the vast beauty of nature a little longer than we planned. When we started that morning, our eagerness, excitement, everything centered only around our destination. But the roads made us realize that the journey matters the most. It's the journey that we undertake that makes the destination much more glorious. Even when the sun kissed the horizon, our journey continued. With just a blink of an eye, evening brooded over and covered everything with its dark cloth. When the sun goes down, it's highly dangerous to drive in the mountains, mostly because there's no light to show the way. But we had to go on. But the tension was increasing as we knew that even a little bit of carelessness could have knocked the car down to a bit of darkness, which frankly, none of us wanted to taste. They say, when there's no light to show your way, you have to become your own light. Literally so we did that. Since our curse hit lights were the only light available to us. Piercing the heart of darkness at 8,790 feet above sea level, our car was heading to Chokta.
the next morning when the dawn broke in and the sun rays lifted the dark veil of night we discovered the real beauty of jokta we could finally see the snow glittered mountain ranges piercing the heart of the blue sky standing with all its grandeur like a white scarf the snowy mountain ranges encircle the beautiful green valleys of jokta the white stone path to tungnath glittering with sunbeams and melting ice seemed to touch the clouds it was a stiff trek but the soothing weather and the undaunted beauty lightened our toil of going up hill
Our journey paused slightly when we reached Tungna, but that wasn't our final destination. We were eager for our night trip to Chandrashila. So after a few minutes lunch break, we set out again to get familiar with the way. Rather, to make our own way to Chandrashila. It was absolutely necessary to get quite a clear idea of the path we were planning to set our foot on at night. But is there for the night a resting place? A roof for when the slow dark hours begin. May not the darkness hide it from my face? You cannot miss that in. At first, I didn't realize why these familiar lines from Christina Rossetti's poem came to my thought when I took recluse at the stony floor of Tunganath temple. But as the time passed by, and the sun started to sink slowly behind the mountains, I grasped the significance. The mystic twilight enlightened my soul spiritually. After all the hard toils of the day, there I was, tired and exhausted, sitting at the floor of world's highest Shiva temple, literally. What could have been a better place for rest after all the hardships of journey than the abode of God? Seriously, no one could have missed that little rocky nest of peace. Not even the setting sun could hide it. Rather, it glorified the place even more. With the sun sinking at the horizon, the feeling of ending overwhelmed me. The hardships were coming to an end. All the planning, the excitements to be where I was then were coming to an end. The long day was coming to an end. But I never knew before that ending can be so beautiful, so colorful. Within the blink of an eye, the blue sky turned into a multicolored canvas, and in its heart, the red ball of light slowly sinked to call the night. I don't know where heaven is. I don't know if Lord Shiva lived there or not. But what we witnessed that day, it was something heavenly. In that mystic moment, with my eyes full of tears, and heart full of happiness. My whole body could a silent prayer to Lord Shiva, the God of destroyer and preserver. 
to destroy all the tiredness, the weakness of my trivial existence and preserve in me, in us, the love that can bring us back home at the lap of Himalaya again. Every ending marks a new beginning. Embracing the starlit night and fresh snow-covered path, we rejuvenated our spirit and began our night trek to Chandrashila to witness the beginning of a new dawn standing at Asia's second highest sunrise point. We all knew that time changes things so fast and with it, changes our feelings regarding them. Our night trip to Chandrashila gave us a proper taste of it. The path to Chandrashila we ventured and explored, rather we thought we mapped out only that afternoon, appeared so different and much more dangerous at night. A little stream that we saw that afternoon had turned into a slippery glass of ice. The thought that one step of error could knock you down forever into a darkness, the bottom of which can't even be seen in broad delight, made us cautious and at the same time unstoppable. But we had competitors. Our eager steps were forced to stop at times when the inhibitors of the place, the dogs, barked and huddled their way to the top ahead of us. Who knew? Whether they were showing us the way to the top or showed their disgust with the newly arrived peace breaker of their beautiful barren home. Hearing, slipping, stumbling, and crumbling, crawling, climbing, we somehow managed to reach Chandrashila at 5 o'clock in the morning. Well, up there, it wasn't morning yet. It took one and a half hours more to see the sun peeping from behind the mountains and spreading its slow, reluctant rays through the heart of freezing darkness. Again, the sky glittered with colors. A mystic blend of red, purple, blue fell on the snowy mountains before coloring them for a brief with a royal golden touch. And finally, all the ranges revealed their true grandeur.
7.30, we were walking downhill. The thin layers of ice were melting with the sun's warm kiss. As the sun was climbing higher in the sky, its warm rays gently touched the mountain tops, along with every single cell in our hearts in an unspeakable way. When we turned our eyes against the sun to walk back from where we started, we knew in our hearts that what we saw, the less we captured, and much little will ever be able to describe. The sun will rise and set every day, but we knew in our hearts that whenever we'll cast our eyes to a rising or setting sun, we'll always long to come back here. With a heavy heart, we were walking down to Chukta. The weather wasn't pleasant. Dark clouds were hiding the ranges the way the clouds of sadness hide our joys of yesterday. As we walked down the meadows, new explorers continued to pass by, inquiring about and venturing the way we walked yesterday, with the same joyful faces, with the same excitements. While our journey was coming to an end, theirs only began. As my reluctant feet slowed down and eyes looked back to the home I have left behind, Robert Frost's lines came in my mind. The woods are lovely dark and deep, but I have miles to go before I sleep. With a promise to return again someday and a heavy heart, we all walked away from Tungnat. We had to go on, for this was only a stop. Kedarnath was calling then, and we walked away to answer to its call.